In this video I'm going to show you a very good temperature controlled or temperature activated triac circuit. You can use it as it's shown in this video for 120 volts or you can modify for use with 240 volts. Now the reason why I decided to put this circuit together I came across a very nice 120 volt blower motor fan out of an old AC unit and I'm going to use that as an attic ventilator fan to force the hot air out of the attic and which in turn will keep the inside of the house cooler. Now this is what the circuit looks like a little closer up. In this video I will demonstrate how good this works using the microwave oven desktop fan that I have and this drill which is about 500 watts. I'll show you both of those. Now the first thing I'm going to do is go over the whole schematic, show you how I set it up. Over here you have your 120 volt hot line coming in and there's your neutral. Off of the hot line you have two fuses. One is a 200 milliamp fuse and a 10 amp fuse. Now the 200 milliamp fuse flows through this transformerless power supply and it will flow through a 250 volt 105 or 1 microfarad capacitor preferably a type X doesn't have to be but you're better off having a type X you have a 470 K ohm quarter watt resistor and the sole purpose of that is just to act as a bleed resistor when power is disconnected that will bleed down the capacitor you have a bridge rectifier you can make it out of 1N 4007's or you could use a rectifier chip. It looks like a 555 timer. You can see it right there. I had one of those laying around from scrap. When it leaves the other side of the bridge rectifier, flows through a 100 ohm half watt resistor and back to the neutral. The positive and negative output has a 220 microfarad 25 volt capacitor electrolytic across the output and after that you have a 8.2 volt 1 watt Zener diode. Now you don't need a current limiting resistor here because the current is pretty well limited through this capacitor right here. That will flow from this point through a 330 ohm current limiting resistor into the top of the Mach 3041 right where the little circle is. In here is a little infrared LED and when power is applied this infrared LED turns on shines light on a receiving side of the circuit on the other side of the chip so this is isolated the circuit on this side with the infrared LED is isolated from the circuit on this side the infrared LED comes on shines a light inside this little chip on a receiving side which allows current to flow through this side of the chip so you have the other side, pin number two, power goes out and into the output of the LM393 integrated circuit. And when pin one is triggered, it will go low internally and connect to ground, allowing this LED here to illuminate and trigger this circuit over here. Pin eight goes to the power rail. That's the power supply coming in. Also from that power supply rail, it will flow into the top of a voltage divider, 210Ks. This is a reference voltage which goes into pin 2. Now also connected to the power supply rail is another voltage divider that's made up of a 2.7K resistor in series with a 20K potentiometer. And then after the potentiometer, that ties into a 10K NTC, negative temperature coefficient thermistor, and that goes to ground. At the junction of this thermistor and the potentiometer, that goes into pin 3. Now between pin 1 and pin 3 is a 150K resistor, and the purpose of this resistor is to help adjust the switching on and off of states of this LM393 integrated circuit. Pin 4 goes to ground. Now how this is going to work 
you have a constant reference voltage right here which is going to be around 4.1 volts when pin 3's voltage drops below pin 2's voltage and that is going to happen when the thermistor heats up the resistance will become lower causing the voltage on this input here to drop when it does drop this Mach 3041 will then have the LED come on triggering the triac portion of the circuit now if you want the circuit to be triggered by cold instead of heat you would take this thermistor right here and you would put it in the position where the 2.7k in series with the 20k pot is and you would take this group right here and put them where the 10k was so the setup will now cause this voltage to drop going into pin 3 as it gets colder now we're going to go over the high side of the circuit that's going to be controlled with the load the line goes through the 10 amp fuse you make sure you size this according to your triac I am using a Q4010L5 that's a 10 amp triac if you're using a 4 amp like a BT136 then you would make sure you have a 4 amp fuse from that fuse it will flow into the load which in this case will be this microwave oven fan on high power this part of the circuit which follows the load you have a capacitor which is a 100N or a 0.1 microfarad to a 0.15 microfarad 400 to 600 volt capacitor and this 50 to 200 microhenry inductor after it flows through the noise filtering portion of the circuit through this inductor it then flows into MT2 main terminal 2 off of the main terminal 2 tap you have a 330 ohm resistor going into the Mach 3041 into pin 6 pin 5 is not used so the 330 ohm resistor goes into pin 6 and then pin 4 flows into the gate so this part so when the LED comes on this side of the circuit closes triggering the triac causing it to turn on now because we're using MT2 to trigger the gate whatever MT2 is positive or negative the gate will also be positive and negative in respect to MT1 which means this circuit will be triggering on either quadrants 1 or 3 now 1 is the most sensitive quadrant because it's the shortest distance with the short fewest amount of junctions and quadrant 4 is the least sensitive with the most amount of junctions requiring the most amount of gate current we will only be using quadrants 1 and 3 with this setup now between MT2 and MT1 you have a 100 ohm in series with a 0.1 250 volt capacitor the reason for that it's called a snubbing circuit I've seen this used in a lot of other triac dimmers and motor control circuits it helps protect the triac and also helps prevent against false triggering this particular part of the circuit is not necessary if you're not going to be using inductive loads such as motors or fans now if you want to use the circuit for 240 volts it's fairly simple just take this value here make it a 504 which would be a 0.5 microfarad make that 400 volts make this value a 1 meg half watt make sure it's a 400 volt bridge rectifier you're also going to want to bring the wattage up on this 100 ohm resistor to maybe 1 watt and this all could stay pretty much the same you might want to push this one up to maybe 50 if you have 100 laying around that's fine you can throw it in but all of these will stay the same if you make those changes you should be good to go for 240 volts I have the thermistor over here ideally you should have it mounted further away from the board you can have a wire routing the thermistor maybe a foot away from this board so you don't have any issues in case this heat sink gets hot affecting the value of the thermistor now the circuits powered up and I already have the potentiometer which is right here adjusted for the range that I want so everything's okay I'm going to take my finger and I'm going to hold it on top of the thermistor like that and you will see the fan come on soon
Now my finger's off. And the beauty of this, even with my finger off, there's at least 20 or 30 seconds before it turns back off. So with me using it as an attic fan, there's going to be a lot of hot air passing that thermistor, keeping the circuit running until cooler air passes over the thermistor. My finger, there it is. Good 20, 30 seconds, and we're back off. Do it again. Touch my finger to it. Let it sit there for a minute. My finger's off. And it will remain running for a good 20, 30 seconds. Because I pulled the heat away, which is my finger. So that works extremely well. Now I'm going to show you using a drill that it can handle a much higher load. Now I'm going to squeeze the trigger on the drill and apply heat to the thermistor with my thumb and the drill will come on. And the reason why that went off quicker, the exhaust was blowing directly on the thermistor, cooling it off faster. If you like the circuit, a link to the schematic will be posted in the video description area. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please rate it a thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs.